Atlantic. 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 Oh, I've not heard that yes. name for quite a bit. It was a great company run, founded by Kenyans. Yes. It was a Microsoft partner, I think gold or platinum, mm-hmm. and their core work was system integration. So yes. essentially... and networking. And networking. Early days. I remember in my younger days working at Toyota, that's... Uh, Oof, should I say, <laughs> uh, mid-90s, Atlantic did actually our first wide area, local area network and wide area network across Eastern Africa. Wow, wow. So the thing that uh, tugged at my heart is Atlantic exposed me to structured cabling. Mm-hmm. How do you move enterprises? Back then you used to buy servers in boxes. Correct. So un- unbox the server. <laughs> I know this was before <laughs> cloud and virtualization. Yes. Desktops, laptops, connect users, set up users on Active Directory, mailboxes. How do you make sure that the desktops communicate with servers? How do you make sure Ali is accessing what he's supposed to access and at the right time? So that just blew my mind. Yeah. So you are talking about your experience starting out at infrastructure level at the basic level back end wow back end so by the time i completed my internship they were gracious enough to tell me hey once you're done with your degree give us a call Mm. and i did just that Mm. and for me i'm eternally grateful because i never looked for a job early completed my studies went back to lantec and now that just continued to open my world because like you said, for example, in this case, mm. they deployed a Toyota. Mm-hmm. We deployed to different enterprises. Yes. So it gave me a flavor of, okay, what does IT mean to publishing, mm. manufacturing? And then from there, I joined an internet service provider. It used to be called ISP Kenya. ISP. Yes. I ISP recent- Kenya. I recently reconnected with Brian Longwe. He used to be my boss's boss's boss. What? Yes. That is amazing. Brian is now in Malawi. In Malawi. Mm. And that introduced me to the world of wide area networking, Mm -hmm. routing. Mm -hmm. And then after a two and a half year gig, I then now joined Corporate Kenya. Okay. Different roles, still in technology. Okay. And of course, with a bias with backend infrastructure. So did a six year gig at East Africa Breweries. Amazing time. What were you doing at EBM? Five different roles, actually. Um, server within ad- tech. Within tech. Server administration. So you get to see, <laughs> I got to see how, what is the application of technology in are, beer manufacturing? Are those, are those roles there anymore anyway? They are there, but they've changed. They've changed. So I did. They, ha- they have evolved. They've evolved. Mm. As technology has evolved. And as rightfully. So what so, did the server administrator do that. server administrator did very similar to what today an azure admin would do mm-hmm. like basic hygiene mm. what are the key things you need to continually do for a server to make sure services are always up yes. patching yes uh, maintenance backup the boring stuff that makes companies tick correct that- the the literally the unsung heroes at the back end. Correct, correct. The people you hardly see unless an incident. Unless occurs. things things uh, things become elephants somewhere. Absolutely. So, be also a bit of database administration mm-hmm. in Microsoft SQL, and after six years, joined the Pride of Africa, and Kenya, Kenya Airways. Airways. Yes. Oh wow. Kenya Airways introduced me to, at the time, Kenya Airways had around 5,000 staff. Mm-hmm. So it introduced me to... Across the world. Yes. Licensing. How do you structure licensing for an enterprise? For Windows environment? Optimally. And exactly. Optimally and in a sustainable way. Um, of course, engaging a lot with finance, mm-hmm. procurement. Mm-hmm. And then I dipped my toe into the world of financial services after that. So from Kenya Airways, you got into financial services. Correct. Eight banks years. Banks or... Uh, banks. Or startups. Banks. 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 Uh-huh. Eight years. Eight years. In banking. Exactly. And that's how our paths crossed, yes. if you recall. Yes. I first joined Stanbic Bank. Mm. Um, handled a portfolio where I was in charge of IT operations. IT operations is, again, 
the people who make sure services are running from a, 100%. at the back end. I left, I felt ready to take on a C-suit role. And that's when I joined KREP Bank at the time, but it later rebranded Cidian to Cidian Bank. Mm. Four amazing years. At CIO. At CIO slash COO. Chief, Chief Information Officer, Chief Operating Officer. Absolutely. Wow. And one of four the, years? Four years. Four Tell amazing years. That. It was amazing because it thrusts me into... Beyond learning, tech. Beyond tech. How do you tell the story of tech to businessmen? And why is it important? Because these are the businessmen, the owners of the bank. You want them to approve your budget, your spend. So you have to break it down. In terms and these of, guys are about making money, not spending. Correct. They're okay to spend if they can see what's in it for mm, the bank. Mm. So that was a very interesting... That's a very interesting... Uh, one, Catherine. Mm -hmm. One thing that, in my experience, um, I have found sitting as an operational executive and sitting at board level that tech people find it very difficult mm. to translate tech needs into business requirements. And f at a board level, the board members want to approve stuff that has, one, a direct impact to the bottom line, short, mid to long term. Two, has an impact on the ability of the company to sustain long term. Business continuity. Mm -hmm. This is not something that it's easy for tech people to, mm -hmm. to talk about. Mm -mm. Tell us your experience about that. One of the things, I had to go back to school early. Wow. I had to go back to school. And the beauty about the era we are living in, you can go back to school, but you're still... You're still working. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When you look at, I'll use an analogy, for those who opt to take an MBA, there's a common course called accounting. Mm. They're fully aware. Not accounting for non-finance people. Or accounting 101. Yes. Let me call it accounting mm. 101. They are fully aware that the cohort, mm. not everybody wants to go into accounting. Yeah. But they make sure it's mandatory. Why? Yes. Because accounting teaches you numbers. Mm. Numbers is the language for business. 100%. So you have to learn. Mm. So I took up a course to learn, okay, when I'm making a presentation to the board about a huge IT spend, and mm. IT spend tends to be big, depending on the size of the usually, organization. Usually, usually. What is in the mind of a businessman? Mm. How do I make sure I'm speaking their language? How am I able to show what is it? Yes, it's a cost, but how is it connected to customer value? How is it connected to culture value? How is it connected to business value? So that's what I did to improve my fluency. So I'm not just coming there to talk about, oh, we need to virtualize this environment. You need to migrate to cloud. It gets shut down. Correct. You lose the audience. Yes. So you have to learn. Remember communication happens at the person you're communicating to. Correct. Not you who's talking. Correct. So I had to go back to school early to answer your question. So those four years uh, were quite... Uh, transformational.